Hi there and welcome to our final lesson on our B6 topic and your final biology lesson um, and today we're going to be looking at gene technology where we're going to be looking at uh, genetic modification, genetic engineering and DNA. Anyway, a quick joke for you. What does DNA stand for? I'll tell you at the end of the lesson. Okay, so let's have a look at our objectives for our lesson on gene technology. So by the end of uh, this lesson you should understand how genes can be engineered for DNA studies and for gene therapy. All living organisms contain material known as DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, the understanding of DNA has changed so much in recent history that we can actually take uh, genes from one organism and add them to another organism. This is known as genetic engineering. Now genetic engineering can be used to change or deliberately change the characteristics of a particular organism. It's quite often done with uh, bacteria, plants and animals. Now you can see this picture here, it shows a kiwi fruit that has been genetically engineered to have a different colour skin. Now it could be that this is an orange skin so they've had the DNA or the gene for orange skin added into the DNA of the fruit, of the kiwi fruit. Now this is known as a transgenic organism. Now in order to do this there are several stages. The first is to identify the desirable gene. The second is to remove the gene from the DNA. Thirdly, cut open the DNA of another organism. Now this is done using a restriction enzyme and this leaves sticky ends of the DNA. The new gene then works in the transgenic organism and the transgenic organism is then cloned. Now once the transgenic organism has had the DNA entered or the new gene added to its DNA it then uses a different type of enzyme to stick the two ends together and this is called a ligase enzyme. Artificial hormones are replicas of hormones that exist naturally in, in the human body. Now these can be made artificially using gene technology. This is really useful for the production of hormones such as insulin and the human growth hormone. Now the way the insulin hormone is reproduced artificially is as follows. Firstly, it needs to be identified and removed in precise places. This is done by using the restriction enzyme. You then have the isolated gene. The same enzymes are used to cut open the bacterial DNA. Bacterial DNA is circular and is known as a plasmid. Enzymes are then used to insert the insulin gene into the plasmid. Now that the insulin gene is in the plasmid it can then can then replicate so that you can get lots and lots of that gene being able to produce the insulin hormone. The final stage is the transgenic bacteria are then added to fermenters to produce large scale quantities of the insulin. Now once the insulin is able to be produced it can then be harvested in large quantities on an industrial scale. Genetic engineering can be really useful. It can be used for things such as increasing crop yield, producing weed killer resistant crop, ensuring plants can produce useful products such as vitamins, also helping plants to survive in poor conditions. Now, as we've seen with the previous uh, instructions for the setup or the production of insulin, 
not all bacteria can be used to help produce insulin. Scientists used a technique known as assaying to identify transgenic bacteria. They do this by using the following method, such as adding in a marker gene so that they can identify where the gene is. Now the marker gene might be an antibiotic resistant gene. The bacteria are then grown on an agar jelly that has the antibiotic added to it. The transgenic bacteria can then be identified because it will be able to grow and survive in those conditions. Now once they've identified the transgenic bacteria that can be used, they are then able to extract the plasmid. Now the plasmid is found in the cytoplasm of the bacteria cell and not in a nucleus. Now these plasmids are taken up by the bacteria and used as vectors. So a vector is the bacteria that contains the new gene that's been added to it. Now DNA is very popular at the moment on TV programs such as the Jeremy Kyle show where they're looking at DNA fingerprints of individuals to perhaps find out who the dad is of a particular baby. Now this is all done with scientific certainty because all human DNA is different from everybody else's which means you can identify who a person is by their DNA. Now DNA fingerprinting requires a form of chromatography. Now DNA is used by the police to identify people from a crime scene. Now you can see this DNA trace here. You've got the DNA found at a crime scene and then you've got the four suspects and you've got their DNA here. Now this represents the results that are found and you can see here that suspect 3 has the same DNA as that found at the crime scene. Now quite often you see on modern TV programs such as Hawaii Five O or NCIS or CSI where they have DNA fingerprint databases. Now these are quite controversial as they can contain the DNA of people convicted of crimes. Now DNA is taken from all people who are convicted of a crime. Now this means that DNA can be used to go back over old cases by using technology that wasn't around uh, when the crime was committed but they have now got the technology where they can do this. Now because DNA is a very very accurate and because it's only each person has their separate DNA it's very controversial as the evidence will be very very strong in the favour of the people using that evidence. However, some people think that it's an invasion of privacy to have DNA, DNA samples taken from uh, people committing minor offences and just the general public who have not committed any crime at all. So how is DNA fingerprinting done? Firstly, the DNA is isolated, which is either extracted from blood or hair. Secondly, the DNA is cut into fragments by restriction enzymes. This is known as fragmentation. The third part is the separation. The DNA sections are separated by a process known as electrophoresis. And that's what we saw in the previous section where we had the DNA uh, sections that had been separated for the criminals. Sorry, I meant suspects. The fourth and final stage is the comparison where the DNA from the suspect or potential fathers is compared to the crime scene or the baby's DNA. Now, in order to see the DNA, a radioactive probe is added to the DNA so that it is able to be visualised. Okay, so for those of you that have fast forwarded to the end of the video, the joke uh, answer is what was, what does DNA stand for? And the answer is the National Association for Dyslexics. Anyway, it's not very funny, but I hope you enjoyed it. 
Anyway, we'll recap what we have looked at. We've looked at genetic engineering, which is the removal of a gene uh, from one organism and locating it in a different organism, and that's known as a transgenic organism. We've looked at how we can artificially produce uh, human hormones such as insulin or the human growth hormone by using uh, bacterial DNA, which is a plasmid. And then we've looked at how we can use DNA and for things like crime investigation or working out who somebody's dad is from the Jeremy Kyle show. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Look after yourselves. Bye bye.